Vision of Truth, based on John 8 verse 32, every Thursday from 5 p.m. till 6 p.m. on Radio East River, with Brandon and Rowena Smith. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free.
Vision of Truth based on John 8 verse 32 every Thursday from 5 p.m. till 6 p.m. on Radio East River with Brandon and Rowena Smith. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Hi, good afternoon. Welcome everyone back to VOT Sessions with myself, Brandon Smith and Rowena. Welcome back on a chilly and afternoon here in Cape Town, I think. Um, I'm going to say that 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 I'm going to En as daar wat het te warm is, as sê ons jyre hou op wat het te warm is, maar jyre dink ook sêke somtijds, jylle klaar altyd, ons is nooit dankbaar, he. maar ons is dankbaar, ons is dankbaar vir die, vir die, vir die reen, ek dink, um, vir ons is het miskien nie nuttig, maar vir ander mense en ander um, producte en mense daar buiten is het nuttig. Net die, net voordat ons gekom het, jylle sêke na die song geluister sterk toering, ek dink, um, alle loof en alle eer gaan ook aan die jyre toe vir ons eerste um, debut single that was released, um, um, it was last week, Friday, you can find it on all platforms. Um, this has really has been a journey that the Lord has taken us on. And not sometimes you think you are just making music, but you're not making music. You're actually ministering and worshiping the Lord for what he has done for us. And that is just some of one of our offerings. And we're excited. Amen. You guys are welcome to go look at the music video on YouTube, on Vision of Truth. You're welcome to search the song on all platforms, Spotify, Apple Music, um, ek ken nie al die plek. Shazam. Yes. Shazam. And Soundcloud. All, everything, like, I don't know. Google Zander, Music. 117 platforms, so jy leg a platform, kan jy dat op search, Vision of Truth, Sterf Touring, featuring Rebecca Plaikies. Um, it's, it's really been a, uh, such a special journey for us. And the 23rd of August, um, the second one is... Um, dropping, it's a day before VOT, the 24th of August um, but alle lof en alle eer gaan in die heren toe in die tijd, I think my wife will give you guys more, just background on all the socials, which you can see my tongue right there, because I'm from the socials part because I'm not a, um, a social fundi, I'm a TikTok fundi but not a social fundi <laughs> <laughs> die heren moet my verlofs, want die TikTok af <laughs> oh, goeie dag amma, welkom by VOT sessions um just so true that Brennan says that Brennan found this one TikToker and he's been watching it this whole week, sending me all the posts. I can't hear it. Um, it was such a lovely um, time to do the rendition. Like it, I can't explain the time in the studio. It was just so special. And to finally hear the final product on all platforms to so drive in your car on your way dropping the kids and seeing the album cover the Esther Touring it's just such a special thing to be part of and we can't wait for the next single to drop which will be the 23rd of August please watch our socials next week we'll be putting up all the information on there if you're not following us on any socials yet we are available on Facebook Vision of Truth Instagram v.o.t underscore sa, YouTube v.t dot v.o.t underscore sa, and then also TikTok, Vision of Truth. And if you don't do social media, we are on WhatsApp, so you can follow our WhatsApp channel also. We are 16 days away from VOT, 16 da. In two days' time, the two-week countdown is starting. I cannot believe it. We are excited. We are heading into VOT retreat tomorrow. If you don't know what that is, it's team building that the team just get together and we just seek the Lord and ask him to help us because we cannot do it in our own powers. We cannot do it through our own might. Only through him, the 24th of August is possible and that is what tomorrow is about and we're very excited. We're heading to Salambosh Town or I think it's going to be great it's going to be amazing we are very excited but if you 
don't know what Vision of Truth is about, it's a movement led by the Holy Spirit showcasing God's grace through worship and testimony. So we are there to worship and we are there to testify about His Word. If you don't have your ticket yet, head over to Quicket. Just search Vision of Truth and you will find the event. Book your ticket ASAP. It is free at, a, at no cost to you. Just get yourself there the 24th of August at 7 p.m. And if you want to bring the kiddies with, you are more than welcome to bring the kiddies with. We've got a nice little section planned out for them. So we will keep them busy. Um, and I think that's it. Yeah, I think I just want to add something there by Rowena regarding the tickets. Um um, and this is something that we prayed about. It's not we don't we didn't put tickets up so that we can see the numbers and set down. We literally put tickets tickets up to make sure that we limit it to how much people come. Because and we adhere to the rules because we are also under the authority of the municipality in Salambosh and we need to adhere to the rules so we cannot exceed the capacity. Yes, so Al is that tien mense die Heere gaan na wees. Al is dat 600 mense die Heere gaan na wees. So the ticket is free, is literally just we following protocol. En of die die woord van die Heere sê, dat wat die real wat in die hemel is, is op aarde. En dat is maar een toepassing wat ons doen. So if you guys can just, as Rowena just mentioned, just pop on to the site and grab your ticket to make sure that you have a seat and have place. Um, end of the day, it's about um, we're just making sure that each and every one is welcome when they arrive there, and that the Lord can take each and every one of us by the hand and lead us to. So the word van die Heere sê na die vul na die groen wy vielde groen wy vielde en die beloofde land. Tongues dik met die tongue raak nou dik met die Engels en Afrikaans. But um, but so yeah, guys, so that's that's a reason why we had to um, just get the tickets online for everyone. I think the most important person who we've asked to be there is Jesus Christ. As long as he is there, I don't think anything else matters. If you've tuned in today and you're wondering what today's topic is about, we are continuing with last week's subject, which was the Samaritan woman. I think just before, shall we do it before, after the break, after the break, just do a quick summary and then we will continue the conversation straight after the break. Don't go anywhere. Vision of Truth, based on John 8 verse 32, every Thursday from 5 p.m. till 6 p.m. on Radio Easter River with Brandon and Rowena Smith. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free.
Vision of Truth, based on John 8 verse 32, every Thursday from 5pm till 6pm on Radio East River, with Brandon and Rowena Smith. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Welcome back to VOT Sessions. Oh, I, too, I, I don't know, I lost a train of thought now, we just received a message. Um, my own says no need. But the message was focused on the word of the And before we even move any further, I just want us to just have a moment of silence and just pray to the Lord and ask the Lord to guide us this afternoon. Our oh, Abba Father, aunt in heaven, thank you, Jesus, for a wonderful day. Thank you for good health. Thank you for just having air and our lungs to breathe. And thank you for just being who you say you are, my Lord. You are mighty. You are glory. You are everything we are not, my Lord. And still, each and every day, you fill us with love grace, and everything that we need to go on every day on our daily routine, my Lord. I ask you this afternoon, my Lord, that while we're going to speak about your word, not our word, my Lord, that you will touch our, our minds and touch our hearts, but most of all that we will speak and, ex- and, and, and glorify your name in this moment, my Lord. Be with us, be with each and every one tuning in, my Lord, and that your spirit will dwell among all of each and every one of us. We ask this humbly in your name and your name alone. Amen. Amen. Um, thanks so much for everyone tuning in again. I think we're just going to do a recap before we're going to continue on the word that the Lord has laid on both of our hearts. I think it's, it's, it's not just a word, it's more teaching. I think I always say that um, one teacher can teach you what is one plus one and it equals two. Um, someone else can teach you in another way, but at the end of the day, it still comes down and it still comes to the same um, result which is Jesus mm-hmm. but it's just what we take in and how we take it my, wo- my wife got this word and I got it in another way but at the end of the day it just points back to Jesus and I think that's the most important thing that especially when we also visit and we go to um, different churches to just listen to words and what, what the Lord has to say we always say that we just take what we have to take and what, what I mean by that is the spirit of the Lord will convict you in that moment what you need to learn and I'm going to give over to my wife <laughs> you like stop not so just a quick recap on last week so last week we read out of John 4 and we're going to continue it ended off at um, verse 18 so we're going to continue forth um, by verse 19 but what we spoke about is how Jesus was just fulfilling the scripture even through this chapter in John, we spoke to this woman. It was not by in coincidence. It was planned to be that way. God always planned for him to end up there. He needed to be at the well at that point. But even there, everything was pointing to Jesus and how the conversation with this woman progressed from where she called him a Jew to where she called him at the last, the Messiah, the respect. She gained for him the deep respect, just knowing how he spoke to her and how he treated her. But also, the type of person he was speaking to was not your regular person a rabbi would be seen speaking to. She was a Samaritan, which was one of the lowest levels, was deemed as the one of the lowest levels. She was a woman. You normally don't speak to a woman on her own. And she was also called by many others a sinner. 
an adulteress because of her husband, but no one knew why she had five husbands, but he knew she had five husbands and the person she was living with was not her husband. And we we just spoke about this long conversation they had about the living water because she came to come and fetch water, but she ended up leaving with no water because she received the living water, which is Jesus Christ. Um, is yeah. there anything you want to add yeah, to that? Yeah, actually, like just ju- just to go back to the beginning, I think if if we look right in the beginning, um, who actually started the conversation was Jesus Himself. Amen. Now we also need to understand that um, when we find ourselves in a place that um, we maybe don't know what to do, it's like the Holy Spirit will speak to you. It's so much. It's always like. The Holy Spirit asks from you something first. But the question that he asks, and that's so powerful, is will you give me water? Now, will you give me a drink? Yeah, will you give me a drink? And that is so powerful because in that moment, they're sitting by the well, and yet Jesus is asking for water. And this woman is probably thinking, are you crazy? Like, can't you get water yourself? But you see the question Jesus is asking is a question that just doesn't have one answer. You have to come with continue the conversation so she couldn't she had to say but can't you have water or why didn't you get your own water or why are you asking me for the water so there's so much answers she could have given but jesus had to reach out to her so that she could respond and you think this is how the the conversation started and it was probably one of the longest conversations in the oh, bible yes. between two people which is actually a man and a woman having a conversation about water but it's it it just also how it points to Jesus and how you re- how how you start a relationship with him, mm-hmm. how you restart a relationship with anyone, how you start a conversation with anyone. It starts with one the one of the parties taking a step to ask hi, how are you, then the other person sit with sits with the option of do I respond and say I'm well thanks and you, or do you just say I'm well, and you cut the conversation short. Jesus reaches out to us like that every day. Will you give me a drink? And it's our choice, it's our decision to respond or not. And are we going to continue this relationship or not? Are we going to continue this conversation or not? But it's beautiful how they take us on a journey of how he's purifying this woman and we're going to continue. Um... During this, Brendan's also going to share a bit on the woman herself because he went to go read up on her. Her name is Fotini. Fotini. Um, just to explain her story post, mm-hmm. post the well as well. So if you've got your Bible with you, will you just open up at John 4 again and we're going to continue from verse 19. And I think we're going to take it step by step, right? I, so we'll do 19 and then we'll pause for a second and just speak about it and then we can continue. I just want to go, before we go over to, 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 to verse 18 and 19 or from 16 downwards. Um, so here's a conversation between Jesus and this woman, the conviction. is mm-hmm. actually the happening. Jesus is actually speaking to the spirit because he needs to get a spirit to make her understand. Now I just want you to pause for a moment. Think on how you got saved. Rowena, how did you get saved? So there's two, in my spirit, I believe there's two ways. One where you seek the presence of the mm-hmm. Lord and one where the spirit convicts you, right? Yeah. So here you see Jesus is trying to, the spirit is speaking to the other spirit, trying to convict or speak to the spirit to understand that. But, and this is where it's a big but sometimes, where she says, um, Sir, give me the water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. That's so powerful because once you don't seek and the Spirit convicts you, you try to negotiate negotiate with Jesus. Mm. And you know what? You come with your... Your um, terms and conditions. Your terms and conditions. And it's fine. Jesus listens to you. But Jesus points you back and he says, just hold on. And then immediately after they, that, he says... Go fetch your husband. So what is he saying? He says, okay, so you come with your terms and conditions. And this is what Jesus is doing. He's speaking to the Spirit. He says, you come with your terms and conditions. Okay, but where's your husband? 
So it takes you back to the sore place, to the place that's hurting, to a place that's sensitive. And this is where Jesus is starting this conversation. So once Jesus is speaking to the spirit, and this is the lady now, he has her in a moment of conviction where something is starting to happen. And here we're going to continue on from. Before we continue, because you just, just put something in my mind there. It's also, she's wanting to understand more the loving or water. She wants it. But Jesus says, hold on. You can't just have it. And he puts her sin on her conscience and says, this is the life you're living. By asking her, where is your husband? So he's telling her, there's things that's not right in your life. And he's bringing it into her conscience so that she can realize you can't just have it. There's things you have to make her right first. Amen. And that's so true. Before you can be in the presence of the Lord, what do you need to do? Repent. Amen. Now, how are you going to get to repentance is when the Spirit convicts you of you doing something wrong. And that's a conversation for a whole other day. Yes. But this is how Jesus is. Sp- so so can can we like start relating to how Jesus is having this conversation with this lady? Because this is the conversation we have each and every day with the Lord when we pray. Mm. So verse 19. Sir, the woman said, I can see that you are a prophet. Now Jesus is a prophet. He's gone from a Jew. To sir, to a prophet, he's progressed in her mind. Our in- ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you Jews claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. Just there, she takes it back again. It's almost like she's, she's um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's like she's trying to convince her that maybe this is not. The Messiah that everyone's talking about, but let me least almost like she's trying to test Jesus. And how many times do we actually test him by asking, Lord, if this is you, show me Amen. this? Amen. But do you know, no, it's, it's, I, I just want to go back to that sentence where she says, Sir, the woman said, I can see that you are a prophet. Now, this is powerful because she says, I can see. Now, the word of the Lord says, or I believe, that you see with your eyes, but with your heart, you believe. And through that, we get faith. So you can see she's still not fully, but something is happening because she's seeing, but she's not yet believing in her heart. But what is happening here is from the beginning of the conversation, she was speaking about about what other people say. Here she says, I can see that you are a prophet. So here is some form of conviction starting to happen. And then she goes on from a woman just speaking about water. She says, I hear that they worship you on the mountain, but the Jews claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. So that's how the journey with the Lord starts in the beginning phases. I was telling a winner in the week that when we started being saved, there's certain things we did because... We thought it was fine. But as you grow spiritually and you start understanding that this is a certain way you need to start addressing the Lord. This is a certain way we need to do things. We never become, I always say, a long-distance runner by just starting today. It's an everyday process that you become stronger and stronger. And trust me, with this journey, you're never going to be fit. You will always need to keep fit and become fitter. So this is what is happening with her at this moment. Is She's also on her own journey with the Lord. So true, and it also shows that she does believe in some type of religion because she knows her ancestors worshipped on this mountain. Now, what she's referring to there, the Samaritans um, believed in the first five books of the Bible, which is basically, it covers a big portion of Moses. Now, when Moses, he started his journey with God, he went to the mountain, and during when they were in the desert, he, every time he went to the mountain to seek the presence of God. But the difference here between then and now is he had to go to the mountain because he met with the Lord face mm-hmm. to face. What Jesus came to earth for was for the Holy Spirit to move in between us every single day everywhere and anywhere and that is much more powerful than being bound to one place and this is where this conversation is leading to but for me 
to know that she knew this shows that she's inquisitive and she knows that there's a void in her life that she's trying to fulfill with something, but she doesn't know what yet. Amen. Amen. And I think, um, till, till verse, what did you read now? Till verse 20. 20. So that like, this is um, so powerful because when the conversation, where this, when the verse ends there, it's, it just jumps to a new intimacy between Jesus and this woman. If you continue reading from there now. So from verse 21 onwards, woman Jesus replied, believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father, neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You, you Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know, for salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshippers will worship the Father in the Spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshippers the Father seeks. Amen. Can just, I just finish that last verse? And yeah. then again? God is Spirit and His worshippers must worship in the Spirit and in the truth. Oh, that's that's so powerful. So can you see how this conversation has just gone to a new intimacy? But I just want to start off by that first word where Jesus says, woman. So I touched on it last last week a little bit. Woman was not a dis, dis, disrespectful way of people speaking back in the mm. biblical time. Jesus called his, his mother Mary woman. It's, now, if you think about it, this woman didn't have a good reputation. As we know, she had multiple husbands or multiple men now jesus in that moment is actually respecting her and saying woman and then he starts the conversation and this is so powerful because he's 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 showing that he loves her he cares for her and now he's continuing with a different intimacy and speaking about the spirit and a lot of things but what is so powerful is he says you samaritan so it's not just speaking about the woman. It's speaking about everyone. He says, he says, worship what you do not know. So he's not referring to her. He's removing her from the situation. He's referring to everyone. So sometimes, you know, like we look so down on ourselves and say, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. But Jesus is saying here, well, there's a lot of other people that also don't understand. There's a lot of other people that don't understand what I'm saying. But he says... Yet the time is coming and has come now. So, think about this. Jesus says, yet the time is coming and it has come now. Jesus is there. So Jesus can turn the time into now. Because the Spirit is there. He's sitting there by the well with this woman. So he's saying, I can change the time and I can make it now. Because my Father has instructed me to be here to save souls for him. So, that is what happens with the Holy Spirit is when he convicts you and he says the time is now. That is what happens in that moment. Sure. So you got the you lost the train of thought. <laughs> no. No, I'm just mm. thinking about what you said. The time is now. Mm. The time is now. But God always puts a weight on it. But Mm -hmm. wait for it. Though it may linger, Habakkuk. Now, if we go to Acts 1 verse 8. Now, before we go there, if you want to turn there, you can turn so long. I just want to finish this. If you think about the Spirit, it says God is the Spirit. But what does God need in order for the Spirit to work? Is a purified heart. Is a Mm -hmm. cleansed soul. He needs to first purify us before he can come and live with us. Now, you see this process happening with this woman. He's busy purifying her. And it's leading up to the point where he now tells her, you are being purified and this is how you're going to worship me. The Holy Spirit is a gift that we receive. And if we look at Acts 1 verse um, 8. But you will receive the power of the Holy Spirit. 
Wait, let me just get this closer to me because I can't read that far. But you will receive power. You, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Of the earth. Now, when this conversation happened, the disciples, there were about 120 followers, went up to the upper room for 10 days. And they waited. But they didn't just wait and become complacent and just waited in complete absence of the Lord. They prayed continually and they continued seeking Him during this waiting period. And without them even realizing this, they were busy cleansing themselves completely to receive the spirit and that is what happens in our waiting period it's not just going into a deeper spiritual relationship with the lord it's not just about seeking him so that he can save you from your situation you are in to save you from your suffering or give you what you are praying for give you what you need but it's actually to cleanse you so that he can come and live with you and do whatever he needs for his plan to succeed, to do his will and not ours. And it's normally what, not what we think he, we want to do, but it's something completely different with, that we didn't even think of or we didn't even expect. And that is why he needs us as a vessel. And this is exactly what this woman, she thought she was just going to get water and the living water and Bob's your uncle, there you go. But God had other plans for her, plans she never imagined, and not just for her, but for her whole family, because that waiting period, we we basically were introspection. It's an introspection what you we you go live on your own conscience and you think, what in my life is not according to Jesus? What in my life is not according to His image? What in my life? Is he not happy with what in my life is not according to scripture? Amen. But it's also looking at the things that what in my life is pure? What in my life can I build on? Mm -hmm. It's about looking at all of those aspects and purifying ourselves so that he can come and live in us. I think I, I always like reading Afrikaans, all the because Afrikaans is at all the emails. <laughs> but... <laughs> In Anandelinge, the same scripture we just read, in Afrikaans it says, waar hulle gewoond was. And that's powerful. Because before that, that 10 days they were, if you read the Bible, before that they spent another 40 days on the mountain. So it's almost 50 days. But hulle was gewoond om in die upper room te gaan. They were used to going there. So when they go there, they knew why they were going there. They knew what they were going to do there. They knew they were going to call on the presence of the Lord. So I, if, if I read that chapter, it's not something that just happened that day. It was waiting, going there, speaking to the Lord, seeking the Lord. And then once, and that's why this is so important because it says in spirit and in truth. So the spirit first needs to be convicted so that the heart can speak the truth. And who can see the spirit? Only Jesus. God knows what goes on in our hearts. God knows why we come to Him before we even ask. When we, when, as jy in die aand op jou knie gaan, beloof ek vir jou, jy kan nie vir die Heere mees sê van omsia wat hy nie klaar weet. He knows all of these things. He knows how glorious He is. He knows how powerful He is. Because that's who Jesus is. That's who God is. He created you before you even thought of yourself. So what do you still need to share to Him that He doesn't know? But what he seeks is the spirit of truth. And that is what Jesus is busy here with. He's stepping into this woman. He's starting to see the deep corners of her heart. He's starting to see, because if he can leave something with her, that's more powerful for him. Because she will do what he has done with inner, and she and he will be inner to speak the truth out there. And that's why the scripture says, Guard your heart for everything flows from it. Because King Solomon know, knew the importance of the heart, the importance the heart 
was for God because God needed a purified heart. And that's why I said guard it at all costs, not against God, but against the flesh. Now, if we look at that, the spirit part, if we look at the other side of it, because I think, yeah, we are clearly seeing there's a difference between worship and true worship. True worship is when you put the spirit and the truth next to each other. Now, what is the truth? No, exactly there where you go. I want you to read from verse 22 to 24 again. Just, I, just, I just want you to read it slowly. I, I just want you to understand what's actually happening here. It starts with this. I, I will also read it. Thanks. The Samaritans worship what they do not know. We worship what we do know. For salvation is for the Jews. Yet the time is coming, and the time has come now, when the true worshippers will worship the Father in the Spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshippers that the Father see. God is Spirit, and His worshippers must worship in Spirit and in truth. I want to read the other. Matthew 16, verse 15, verse 17. Yeah, Jesus is having a conversation with Peter, same as he's having with a Samaritan woman. And you ask, Peter, but what about you, he said? Who do you say I am? Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood by my, my father in heaven. This is so powerful. What is truth? Is when we worship to speak about God. Right? What is Jesus doing in this moment? He's being so lowly as he is, he's removing himself and he's pointing it to his father. He's saying, My father wants this. He's not saying you wants this. How many times? Don't we miss it because we can't get out of the way. We're standing there and we're speaking and we sometimes think it's us. But it's God. Yeah, Jesus is saying, he's not even pointing it to him. He says, I did not reveal this to you. I did not do anything. All that I came to do is I came as the spirit and I'm speaking the truth. But my father in heaven is seeking this. My father in heaven is revealing this to you, Peter. Peter who has walked with him each and every day. Jesus is not taking the credit. He's saying, my father revealed this to you. Yeah, the son is telling a woman how his father wants to be worshipped, I think we need to take note because if we can learn something from this, the son that sits on the right hand of God is saying, this is how my father wants to be worshipped. There's nothing more truth than this. Amen. And I think we as believers, I, I mean, me, myself, me and my wife speak about each and every day. That's one thing we pray about the each and every day. I say, Lord, Don't let we ever stand in the way of your glory. Because we need to make sure that everything points to you. When it points to the cross, when it points to you, when it points to you dying on the cross for us, people will be saved. Because there's no bigger testimony than Jesus Christ dying on the cross for each and every one of us. It's so true that you say that because once he pointed it to his father, he revealed himself. Amen. Only then did he reveal himself, not before or anything. He first didn't go to himself and then to his father. He first went to his father and then. But this is so powerful. He revealed it to the woman also. After The woman said, I know that you are the Messiah. So if you think in the beginning conversation, what was the first words to Jesus also? You are a Jew. A Jew. Now he says, the woman said, I know that the Messiah is... So there's some form that's happening here. And who is convicting her? God. Because Jesus referred to Peter also. He said, my father in heaven is the one that's doing all this work. Yes, I may be a vessel. I'm part of the spirit that's convicting. But if we understand this and we grasp this as believers that we are mainly a vessel to Christ. And once we start understanding that it becomes part of 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 my my wife always reprimands me the way I speak sometimes because I'm Afrikaans 
So ons vertaal alles straight oor in Engels. She doesn't rap him. He makes it sound like a but that is, like a Hitler. No, but army camp guys, I do not reprimand him. No, please. Chris, not 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 reprimand. She speaks sure. to me gently, lovely. So she says, "The Frau is a helper." But I also need to listen because she says, "When you speak, watch the language that you use because it's so important." Jesus is speaking here, but never he refers to himself. He refers to his father. And that is something we need to always understand that um, um, we as believers is that when people get saved, we mustn't say, oh, I saved that person. No, you didn't. <laughs> God saved that person. You were mainly a vessel that God used. Amen. But the spirit needs to be convicted for you to order for you to worship in truth. Because remember, so come, so come and ask you, what is truth? Can I break it down? Yes, you, you might as well go now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you see? <laughs> you, you, you can break it down. So to break it down for us who don't, because when you see truth, like initially my first thing went to truth is, I must just speak the truth. It's probably my testimony. I first went to myself. But it's not me. The truth is God's word. It's his word. It's the scripture. It's speaking scripture. It's understanding scripture. Not only understanding scripture, but also meditating on it. So when you are stuck on a scripture and you meditate on it, it actually opens up. Opens up in a way where God then speaks to you through the scripture. If we look at Jesus, when he walked, roamed the earth, he spoke in parables. So he never gave you a straight answer. He never told you exactly what he was talking about. He, it was also always a parable. It was always the sower, um, the seed. What am I? There's, there's so many, the, the brides. There's so many parables that you will find um, right through Matthew, Luke, Mark. You can, you can even but go as far as reading Ab- Abraham's story where he offered his son. That was even a parable. Well, yes. Now, if you re- read up in Mark 4, verse 33 to 34, it says, With similar parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as much as they could understand. He did not say anything to them without using a parable. But he, when he was alone with his own disciples, he explained everything. When you are alone in your upper room with God, when you are speaking to him, him alone, he will lay out the scripture for you. He will explain the scripture for you. You won't be able to understand what you're reading if you don't Go and ask him to explain to you. Otherwise, it becomes meaningless if you don't understand. You will never be able to fully see or hear what he wants to tell you. So, um, it's a way for him to distinguish the true worshippers. So, just if I understand you correctly... um, the more we seek him, the more he reveals to us. Mm-hmm. The story of the woman is a story of many of us. You can't have the truth if you don't have the spirit. So the more she tried having this conversation with Jesus, the more God revealed to her a lot of things she didn't even understand. And that is how it is with each and every one of us. We need to seek him. We need to understand the order for us to get the the spirit that God actually wants from each and in each and every one of us is the spirit and then the truth will reveal because we see within the spiritual world the spiritual realm what God actually expects from us and guess what we say let's say out the heart prati right meaning sometimes we say things towards people and we're like yo ma hoe dit nou uitgekom it's because we're thinking that because we're actually thinking that in our hearts about someone but that's why it's so important for us to protect that spirit within us so that we make sure that we 
we are in line with what God wants from us, or not what God wants from us, but what God wants us to be one day. He forms us and he shapes us. In that moment, we might not be what we have to be, but we're striving towards something that God sees us to be one day. But also the one can't go without the other. You can't have the spirit and not but have the, the truth. truth. You can't have the truth and not the spirit. You probably can have a portion of the truth, you can read your Bible, but not fully know the truth of the Bible or experience the Spirit. But if you really want to truly worship Him, you need to have both. You cannot not have both. Amen. But and I- not experience His true grace and His true glory. Um, I just want to take you to Matthew 13. Where Jesus explains why he speaks in the parable. Those seeing they do not see, though hearing they do not hear or understand. Understand in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. You will be ever hearing but never understanding. You will be ever seeing but never perceiving. For this people's heart has become calloused. It comes back to purifying your heart. Mm. They hardly hear with their ears, and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and turn, and I would heal them. Amen. And I think that's... That summarizes... That summarizes, basically... Amen. Why you need to purify your heart. It all comes back to the heart. Amen. But it's, for me, and going I, back to Jesus, I think for me, out of this whole conversation Jesus had with the lady's name or the woman's name was Fotini, just to get it out there. Fotini is a name, <laughs> but the conviction needs to happen. If you look at Apostle Paulus' story, also when he was on the road, um, and God um, blinded him for, and the Holy Spirit convicted him, that conviction needs to happen. Without the conviction, um, if you don't believe in your heart that Jesus died on the cross and raised the third day and went to heaven to sit on the right side of his father, we're missing it. That is the conviction that happens. And we can say whatever we want today, but if we don't know what we worship, we don't worship an idol, we don't worship something that's not alive, we don't worship something that's dead. We worship a holy father, a holy son that died and raised up the third day. And that's the conviction that happened. The moment I started understanding this, I understood why I breathe, why I love, why I do what I do, why we do what we do for Jesus. But this is a journey. This is a journey each and every day that each and every one of us will have that we sit around the well. And we have this conversation with Jesus. It all depends on what type of conversation we have with him. And I think I'm going to continue speaking about Fotini because I think my wife, uh, it's, it's, I think her mind is somewhere else and thinking about what I just said, probably for next week's word. <laughs> but do you know what is so powerful here is that <laughs> they call her the woman or this woman or woman. Never her name is mentioned, and that is powerful because... Again, everything points to Jesus. It points to God, points to a father. The woman is unknown. Just before you explain the woman and where the story started, I just want I just want to end off John four with where her life basically takes off or where bread is gonna continue. In verse John four verse twenty eight it says then Leaving her water jar, the woman went back to town and said to the people, Come see the man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? She left her jar there. She left with no water, but she left with living water. Yeah. Filled with inner. Yeah, that's so powerful. So, this scripture sums up a very... I wouldn't say bad side of her because we we didn't know how she was. We only heard about certain things that wasn't in line with what we as believers believe that should be. But 
Our name was. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> we're not going to get to Fautini yesterday. So, as you can see, we're not people. But also, during those times, women weren't allowed to divorce yeah. husband. So, she was either left five times, divorced five times by the husbands because either she couldn't bear children because bearing children was an important thing at that time to start your own um, stum. Or there was something wrong with her. Or she grew up, they grew up in a time of how many wars. She could have lost or she could have lost her husband during war. But also with that being said, she grew up in a town that was, that didn't know Jesus. They lived in sin. How, how many of us are in a f- situation right now that come from a family that don't know Jesus? But... But it doesn't mean there isn't a Fotini out there. It doesn't mean we can't change our lives. Fotini from there went and a whole family became saints. It's like it's just like an equal apostle, apostle Polis, apostle, but she was just a woman. And the family became spreading the gospel, spreading the good news, baptizing people, saving lives. Speaking probably about that encounter with Jesus, because who gets to speak about having an encounter with with Jesus, and after that he was crucified, he died, and they still lived in that time, and they said, I had an encounter with Jesus, I had this conversation with Jesus, but see what happens here, her son Victor gets a position in the Rome M- Empire where he moves up the ranks, and he becomes, <laughs> and this is so iconic, I think this is what the Lord does with each and every one of us, where he gets put in a position, and he looks needs to look for Christians, and he needs to kill them or throw them into prison. Sure. Yeah, he is sitting in the position. Your people is coming to him, telling him, your mother, Fotini, and the whole family, your sisters and everyone, is spreading the good news. You need to tell her to stop this. And this this pers- this friend of him, uh, his name was, um, um, let me just get to the name. Um, um, you've got one moment, Jay, you're going to say hard. He said I can continue. So he had a friend that um, was higher ranked than him and told him you need to stop because your mother and him needs to stop spreading the good news. And guess what the Lord does in that moment? He blinds that friend of him. And then while the flan- friend is blind, Jesus comes to him and tells him that I am who I say I am, you will see again. And his eyes opened and Victor, who's the son, baptizes that whole family. Yeah. And they also start spreading the good news. Get what, what happens? They all get thrown into prison. Fotini, the mother and the family, all hears about the story. What does the mother do? The mother rushes over there to the room. Gets there, guess what happens with them? They get thrown into prison also. But inside the prison, they saved souls and baptized people. Everyone died. Fotini still stayed alive. Fotini died. They threw her into a dry well. I don't know. And that is so powerful. So why is it so powerful? Is what are we doing after we have that encounter with the Spirit? After we have that encounter with the Lord, after the Lord has convicted us, we, it's not about the name, it's not about Fotini, it's not about her, it's about Jesus. But she made a decision in that moment that I'm going to do what the Lord has done for me. And that is by pointing people to Him. doesn't matter what, I died in a dry well, but I died in living water, knowing that God saved her that day. And that's what can happen with each and every one of us. Fotini is probably not a name we will read up about. We will just know about the woman that met Jesus at the well. And that is how we need to be. We need just to need to be that person that God had encounter with. We don't need to have all the lights, all the glory, all because that all points to Jesus. One day we will see you see that when we get into the kingdom. And God will tell us, Thank you for being a servant. To me and my word. And that's all that we need to be. We are mainly vessels. Mainly the same way Jesus pointed in that thing. He said, don't give me the credit. Give that to my father. And that's my prayer for each and every one this afternoon. Is that we start becoming more like Jesus. And lonelying ourselves. And being less. So that we can spread the good news of Christ.
God sure. bless you all with that word. I think Amen. I also got blessed with just understanding again that um, we are mainly vessels, mm-hmm. and when we um, when God uses us uh, uses us, um, let's just realize that God could have used anyone else. I say, "Sala club opera as I mut." But it's our decision to um, allow Him to be part of us. But give all the glory to Christ, because He alone deserves it. Um, we get more than enough. Grace, love, um, died on the cross for us. We can't ask for anything more than just speaking about Him and speaking about the goodness of Him in us. Thank you. And with that, I think um, my wife will... Um, just um, close this word of the Lord and place everyone out there and have be safe on the roads, be safe wherever you are. Um, read up about it. We would like to get your feedback on it. Um, ask questions, um, new topics that you guys want to discuss. Please mail us. Please send us. Um, we'll pray about it. But um, it's important for us to start speaking about the word. We're so quick to speak about everything else. Speak about the Springbok. Speak about Manila book. Speak about all the Olympics. Wait. Yeah, like yeah. I'm all in. Vroeg voor ochtend vijf o'clock l- uit kan je about wait. Yeah, the <laughs> wait man. Jij moet vier honderd graag loop het, maar anyway. Maar ons is nog steeds liever wait. Um, but what I'm saying is, let's let's spread the good news. Um, let's spread God. Let's spread Jesus, and that's all that I want to speak about and always want to hear about is Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Let's just close our eyes where we are. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this moment. We thank you for this opportunity, my Lord, to just linger in your word, to just meditate in your word, my Lord, and to just listen what you have to say, my Lord. I pray that in this moment that you open the ears and the heart of the ones who are listening, my Lord, and even to us, my Lord. I pray that we receive this word, my Lord. Thank you that you've given us this blessed word, my Lord, so that we can see your grace and your mercy and your love, my Lord. Thank you for shedding your precious blood for all our sins so that we may live, my Lord, so we may live not only to do what you've asked us to do, my Lord, but to live a life worthy of you, my Lord, to live in the image of you, my Lord, to live according to your scripture, my Lord, and to keep it as close to our heart as we can, my Lord, to live by your feet, to always seek your face, my Lord, this road that we are on, my Lord, this journey, it's not easy, my Lord, and you've promised that it won't be easy, my Lord, but you have overcome, and so can we. Our suffering will not define us, my Lord, but your love will define us, my Lord. Be with all of us. Be with each and every listener that is tuned in, my Lord, today. Cover them with your precious blood, my Lord. Protect them. Heal them where need be, my Lord. I pray this, my Lord, not because we are worthy, but in Jesus' name. Amen. Vision of Truth, based on John 8 verse 32, every Thursday from 5pm till 6pm on Radio East River, with Brandon and Rowena Smith. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Yeah.
Vision of Truth, based on John 8 verse 32, every Thursday from 5 p.m. till 6 p.m. on Radio Easter River, with Brandon and Rowena Smith. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Yes, our station, our talent, our people. Didang Raki.